Well, welcome YouTubers, and today I'm gonna to show you how to square your jetting in the front and the back of your carburetor. I know there's probably some guy right now, man, that, that's easy. You just block off the power valve and you put the equal amount of jets in the front and the rear, and it's square. Well, that's one way to do it. If you like horrible gas mileage, you like it going rich in the burnout box, and you like fouled plugs. There's a way to kind of get around that, but if you want good gas mileage and still have your jet squared, I'll show you how to do it with a power valve. So today I'm feeling pretty American. So I'm gonna put this on and today let's learn some simple math. So if you have kids out there in the home and uh, they're learning geometry or areas and all that stuff, I'll show you what the school system does it, how to put that math to use to make horsepower. So today let's do it. Okay, so we have our carburetor here. It is just all apart. So I, I wanted to um, tell you guys why the power valve is very important for a street vehicle and you can also use it on a race vehicle to be as efficient as possible because your motor will just run better with everything working correctly. It's a thing of beauty. Chief said it. Because I'm telling you, there is nothing greater than a good running carburetor. It's a thing of beauty. And he's right, it's a thing of beauty. So, on the rear, we're gonna block off the power valve. And I'll tell you why for a street vehicle or something that has progressive linkage. And we're only talking about draw through. This is not turbo or anything else. This is only a draw through in a or nitrous deal here. So we have the rear, we're gonna put it down right here. Let's go to the front and it does have a power valve. So let me explain to you why we only put it on the front. Let's remove this guy. So if you're driving around, look at these butterflies right here. You're typically, this is a progressive linkage, so you're just using the front butterflies right here. See this guy? Just using those. And you don't use the rear until you're wide open throttle. So we don't really need a power valve in the rear because we're just gonna draw through those jets in the rear and we're only using the front for all our driving, you know, even sometimes, I don't know of anyone who needs full, full throttle in the burnout box. They might have to goose it for a little bit, but then you're typically coming off of it and you're still just using your power valve and the front butterflies for your burnout, unless you have absolutely no power. Now, if you look right here, there's a hole and this hole goes into the bottom of this into the plenum of your intake. So this goes here. So when this is closed right here, it's drawing a lot of vacuum through this. And if you look at the bottom of your main body, there's a hole right here and there's a hole right here. So this guy goes right there. So you're pulling vacuum right here. Now, let me show you the power valve so you understand how that works. So on the back of your power valve, there's numbers and that's associated with whatever vacuum is gonna keep it closed under light throttle and idle conditions for your particular cam, intake, and setup. That is always going to be a wild card. But what it does, it pulls this diaphragm close, and you see this right here, this little plunger right here, around here, it will be closed, not allowing fuel to come in through your bowls to right here. But when you goose it and this guy opens, fuel will come through right here into, this comes out, and right here, you see it adds extra enrichment. All right, so uh, picture this. Now we know how this guy works. Let me show you a demonstration of what you're gonna do in the real world with this, or how this all operates, that is. So I'm gonna take the main body off, pretend the main body's here, and then you have your metering block right here. So you have two smaller jets behind this right here, and you have two smaller jets right here. So what this allows you to do, when you're just cruising around, see right here, this hole? This hole is pulling vacuum and it's pulling this diaphragm closed. So that's what these numbers mean. And you want a certain amount of vacuum that is gonna keep this guy shut, so that way you, when you're just driving around a light throttle like this, you're only using the two small primary jets. 
That way you can get good economy. It's not loading up. It's nice, crisp, and clean. But when you rack into it and you need a lot more fuel, this guy will open up. And the reason why is because now you have these big holes and all the vacuums coming through right here. So this small hole, it's not enough vacuum to keep this shut. And then if fuel comes through here and you have the power valve restriction channels and you have your two main jets pulling fuel in and it's equal to the rear jet, but you don't need that fuel until you're really wide open throttle you're putting a big strain in the motor. Okay, so if you look at this one, this one's for E85. This is a ATM metering block. This one is a pretty much a stock Holley, but this one came off of a, a circle track um, carburetor and I've modified this. Well, I've actually piecemealed it together. So if we turn it around, of course the power valve is removed here. If I were to remove the power valve on this side, you can see that this one doesn't have restrictions that you can take out and replace the size, but this one right here does. Let me get a closer look at this one real quick. So if you look right here, these can be removed just like your main jets right here. So what you want is these four jets, basically. You got your two main right here, and you got two right here. You want these two to equal up to the same size as the one in the rear to square them. And of course, you look at this one, it does not have adjustable restrictions, it is pretty much just there. And you can see right here, see this main well right here? This goes out to your boosters on the top of your carburetor. These guys right here, this hole, this feeds into the same passageway as these guys. So they share the same main well and they work together to give it more fuel. So if you're asking yourself, like, what size are these? Are they all the same? Absolutely not. These holes, if um, whatever carburetor comes off of, is going to have larger um, power valve restriction channels or smaller, depending on your application. This coming off of a circle track car or carburetor is huge, 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 huge compared to the ones you're going to get. So like if I take this right here, um, the only way to really measure this correctly is with a pin gauge set. I ordered it, it's, it's still not here, but I just wanna make the video. So basically you get a whole bunch of like um, sizes. I'm just using a drill bit as an example. So you get a whole bunch of sizes and they'll give you the measurements on those sizes. So you can really know exactly what it's, it is. And you can see this one is 61 thousandths or 62 thousandths, this guy right here. But if you look at this, these are huge for gas. Look at this, I put it in there it's still loose. So I'm saying this guy's at least 64. Now, let's go over to this side. These are the um, jets I run. And look at this. So we basically have the equivalent of 64 jets and 64 jets right here. So let's talk about that. So we know this guy is about, you know, 64 thousandths, at least 64 thousandths right here. We're just gonna give it the same size as these guys right here. Now Harley does have a chart for this. Um, you can look it up, but you're still going off of like, you know, the honor system and depending how these are manufactured, they could be smaller or larger. So getting a, um, a pin gauge set to know exactly what size these are is gonna be your best bet. What the smallest hole is gonna be your most restrictive part in this. Because obviously this hole's way bigger than that. So this is gonna be a restriction for your metering, but you want these holes, you wanna make sure all these holes, the area of these holes are the same size front and rear when you add them both up. Okay, so for the sake of this video, we're just gonna do one row. I mean, typically you're mirrored on both sides because you want everything to be symmetrical and the same fueling in each one of these holes. You know, that's not always the case because you're gonna be drawing fuel through differently. There's gonna be a whole bunch of like turbulence in here. But for us DIY guys to do this math, it's gonna get us pretty darn close that we know we're not screwing anything up too bad. So let's go ahead and do that math real quick. So here's the formula. If you're fresh out of like, you know, school or whatever, you probably remember this. It's area equals pi radius squared. Really simple math. You know, pi basically is just 3.14, it's a ratio for pi. I forgot how to do this. Like, I've 
didn't have any idea. It's been so long since I've been in school, so I had to refresh in my old math skills. So let's go ahead and do that on a calculator. All right, so basically we, we used the Holly chart. You can look up the Holly chart and it gives you the drill size, which is gonna be the diameter of that hole. Uh, 75 jet is a 0 .082 and a 64 jet. Actually, I had <laughs> these staggered, but you know, like I said, we're gonna keep these the same because it's, whatever the number is, it's gonna be the exact same procedure to get all this. So once we go through this, you can see it's very, very simple. So we're gonna get diameter, then we have to get uh, the radius squared, and that's how we get the area of the orifices, and then we can take that and add both of these together and compare to the rear. So let's go ahead and get the rear real quick. So all we're gonna do is take point zero eight two divided by two that's going to give us the radius now we got to times that by itself uh point zero four one times itself that gives us the radius squared and then we do that by pi times three point one four equals and that is the area for our single jet on the front. So that is going to be 0 0.00527834. You probably don't need to go past this, but we're gonna do it anyways. Since this is the same, we want to do this once. So we're gonna clear all that out and do the exact same thing. 0 0.064 divided by two, which gives us the radius, I mean times the radius by itself, 0 0.032 equals that, that's squared, and then times 3.14, which is pi, equals, and so we got 0 0.0032153, and then we're just gonna, um, here, let's just do this copy and we're gonna go plus I don't know how to type all that out oh well whatever zero zero three two one five three six is that right uh, equals so both of these together so we know this is the same as that one we're gonna take both that out so it's point zero zero six four three zero seven two and if you compare these you can see that this is 64 this is 52 so my front jetting even with that small of a 64 it is still larger because of that big channel in the power valve it'll have slightly more fueling on the front than it will on the rear well, all right, so using this math right here, we now know that the jetting in the front is mathematically larger than the jetting in the rear, because we know the area of all those openings. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to completely square it. There's a lot that goes on in the manifold, you know, and your car has momentum going forward. That's gonna change the jetting on each single cylinder, or the fueling in each individual cylinder, and you'll have to pull your plugs and get a reading on that. So it's always still important that you read your plugs. Just because you have equal jetting front and rear doesn't mean that all your plugs are gonna be getting the exact same fuel. But using this math, we now know that we can take that power valve channel and the smaller jets get better economy and don't block it off guys use this math right here and your knowledge now of the power valve use it to your advantage your vehicle will just run better now this carburetor right here we don't have adjustable jets or restrictions that we can go up or down on both of them if your carburetor like this atm right here it has removable restrictions or jets that you can tinker around with this and get it dialed in perfectly to your vehicle. Not one vehicle is gonna want everything the same. But having a carburetor that gives you that adjustment really empowers you to get the most out of your carburetor. And I guarantee you, once you learn the power valve and how it works, it's just gonna run better and you're gonna be more happy. And your plugs, your motor, everything. And you might even might be better at life 
after this. Anyways, guys, hope you like this video. Subscribe. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.